Last week, the U.S. Mint released a 2022 2.5 ounce U.S. Navy commemorative medal. I don't usually buy their metal products. I mean, I buy a lot of products from the Mint, but usually it's uh, more coin related from the Mint. Um, I do collect bullion products. I don't collect medals in general. In fact, this is the first medal I've ever bought. And it just looked interesting to me, and I wanted to get it to see what it looked like, how it felt. Um, and it arrived today. So let's dive in and take a look. But first, we have to roll the intro. I can't wait to see what's in the box to feel the weight of the two and a half ounces of silver in my hand. But first, full disclosure, the reason this appealed to me so much was because I did spend four years in the Navy during um, Operation Desert Storm and Desert Shield. I was on a battleship and I was on a repair ship um, and I enjoyed my time in the service. And I'm not nostalgic about things like that. I don't collect a lot of Navy, Navy memorabilia but for whatever reason, the combination of Navy and bullion and two and a half ounces um, really appealed to me. So I decided that I was going to take a shot at this. I've learned my lesson, though, from past videos, uh, videotaping me struggling with the box and getting into it. So I've decided this time what I'm going to do is through the magic of video editing, you're not going to see the struggle. So let me get into this box. So I successfully defeated the box. It wasn't the big struggle that I anticipated it was going to be. I probably could have done it on camera and not disgraced myself. This is what the packaging looks like. So let's slide it out of the sleeve, set that aside. The seal of the United States Mint. The Certificate of Authenticity. That opens up to show the details of the coin. Um, and so let's... It gives the artists um, two and a half troy ounces, 99.9% .9 silver, two inches in diameter, plain edge, matted finish. And then it discusses what is on the coin. Um, I'm going to pull this <clears throat> off to the side. I may reference it when we look at the metal inside, or I may not. I may just talk about what I know. Um, it's a very nice feltish box that's hinged. It's not like the Morgan dollars that came in the um, regular cardboard boxes like this. Let's open it up and see what we have. Hold on, I'm going to pause this one second. I want to change the setup a little bit to try to eliminate some of the glare. Give me two seconds. Okay, I've made a few adjustments. It's a little bit better, but I'm going to quickly um, take this out of the box and get a closer look at it. We can see in the back the USS Constitution and the USS Arleigh Burke, not Arleigh Burke, I'm sorry, USS John Paul Jones. And then on the other side, we have the American flag. We have some sailors manning the rail and we'll get into the individual parts of this. I just wanted to get an overall closer view. So let's start with the other side. Let's start with this. This is a line of sailors <clears throat> doing what's called manning the rail. And in general, when a ship leaves to go on a long deployment, as it's pulling into as it's pulling out of port, of its home port to leave on the deployment, or as it's pulling back into its home port after the deployment, they 
do what they call manning the rail and they have non-essential personnel who aren't vital to the operation of the ship leaving or arriving put on their dress uniform for the time of the year so in the summer it would be dress whites in the winter it would be dress blues and they stand at parade rest around the railing of the ship as they're leaving or pulling in in a ceremonial manner um and that's just tradition but that's what these guys are all doing here and i can tell you that for those that want to know these are dress whites if you look at the um the drawing of the coin the coin i'm going to keep calling it a coin because it's round i want everything around to be a coin even when it's not looking at the drawing of the metal i can tell that they're dress whites um and then you have the flag on the flagstaff which tells me that the ship is in port. In port, on the rear of the ship, they have a flagstaff, and that flagstaff flies the American flag. At the very front of the ship, on the bow, at the point of the bow, they have a jack staff, and that staff flies the Union Jack in port. And the Union Jack is a rectangular, all blue flag with stars on it um it's basically the the star field on the american flag without the stripes and then underway as soon as the as soon as the last mooring line comes off the ship the mooring line that that ties the ship to the pier as soon as the last mooring line is released from the pier the ship is considered underway and at that moment the flag is shifted from the flagstaff to the jib all the way up the, think about the main mast all the way up at the up at the top of the ship the, the mast that goes up there's a parallel bar that goes across and the flag is shifted to the jib which is off of anyhow it, it's i say off of the parallel there are a bunch of lines that go up there and the american flag is is shifted to one of those and flown and it is the you see a ship the american flag is always in the u.s the American flag is the, always the top flag. So if you see a ship that has a bunch of flags, the American flag will be the highest flag flying from the jib. If you go to a government building and they have a state flag or they have um, a city flag or they have any other kind of flag flying, the American flag will always be the highest flown flag in front of that building. And then on the other side of the coin, we have the USS John Paul Jones, not named after the bass player and keyboard player for Led Zeppelin, but named after the Revolutionary War Admiral John Paul Jones. We have the USS Constitution, which is the oldest commissioned ship in the United States Navy. And that's stationed up in Boston, and it's essentially a museum now, but it is um, seaworthy. It is float ready. In fact, they have in the past, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, taken it out to sea a few times. You have a flight of F-18s, and the words, don't give up the ship, which is a famous quote by some some commander in the War of 1812, and I probably should know, and I don't. So the John Paul Jones is an Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer. And without getting into a whole lot of details and whatever, because the details are probably boring to some people, the John Paul Jones is um, I'm trying it has um, I'm trying to figure out the way to put it. So the weapon system on board of the John Paul Jones is known as the AEGIS, A-E-G-I-S weapon system. And essentially it's a um, computerized system of radar and weapons talking to each other so that they can track um, multiple targets. They can link with other ships with AEGIS weapon systems that may be in the battle group. And one ship can control all of the radar and weapons for 
the other Aegis ships in the battle group. And so they can create like a a defensive or offensive dome with one ship being the command ship and telling the ships in an automated way when to launch missiles, when to um, when to shoot down planes, when to launch missiles at other ships. And I'm, I'm saying this not to be aggressive, but just to discuss the capabilities. Um, Arleigh Burke class destroyers have Tomahawk missiles. They have Harpoon missiles, which are anti-ship missiles. They have torpedoes. They have uh, all sorts of weaponry and highly, highly, highly sophisticated computer systems. And I think that they're super cool. They're super futuristic. They started developing the technology. Um, the John Paul Jones was commissioned in 1991, which to put an age on myself is the same year that I uh, got out of the Navy. Um, but before the uh, be not before the Arleigh Burke type destroyers, there were guided missile cruisers that were Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers that were the introduction of the Aegis missile system into the Navy. So although I was not in with any Arleigh Burke class destroyers, I was in with Aegis capable uh, vessels that were guided missile cruisers. And so just, you know, my input, I think that this is a really, really, really cool metal. Um, I'm glad that I purchased it. It feels really nice in my hand. The weight is nice. It's decently thick. And I'm super pleased with with the product that, that they sent me. And so let me, we went over that. So I'm going to re just read the description here. The uh, description, the obverse, the heads, depicts the U.S. Navy destroyer John Paul Jones cutting through the water while the USS Constitution sails behind it. An F-18 Hornet formation flies by, leaving smoke trails in the sky, paying honor to both ships. Inscription are United States Navy and don't give up the ship. The latter spoken by mortally wounded Commander James Lawrence to his crew on the USS Chesapeake during the War of 1812. And then the reverse... which is this side. Uh, the reverse tails design features a line of sailors manning the rail while the American flag flies in the background. The inscriptions are the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. So this is a look at the 2022 U.S. Navy commemorative medal. And I am glad that I purchased it um, supposedly in 2023 they're going to release one ounce version of this metal and i will probably also purchase that i'd like to thank everybody for tuning in any comments concerns criticisms or questions good or bad please leave them in the section down below and as always i hope everybody has a great week hi editor andark here and i bet you thought you were going to see the outro well just a second to interrupt with some fake facts First off, I claimed that the John Paul Jones was commissioned in 1991, when in fact it was commissioned in 1993. The Arleigh Burke was commissioned in 1991, and it was commissioned one month and 10 days prior to me leaving the Navy. The other fact that I got wrong is I kept saying that underway the American flag was flown from the jib. It is not flown from the jib. It is flown from the gaff. So I just wanted to clear those two things up so that there wouldn't be any comments down below telling me I got those two facts wrong. Anything else that I got wrong in this video, though, please do point out to me. I always, always take criticism well. Anyhow, I guess now we can roll the outro.